All right, hi everyone, and welcome to our first video in linear algebra. We're going to start by trying to answer uh, a very basic question. What is linear algebra? Now, I know, of course, we can't give a completely comprehensive answer, but maybe we can come up with one that's enough to get us started. Something like trigonometry is the study of triangles, or calculus is the study of rates of change. Just something very basic like that. Uh, that that'll help us frame the course maybe and get ready for uh, for what's coming. So one of my first instincts when trying to come up with an accessible answer to this question is probably very similar to uh, your first instinct. I I googled it and one of the first things I came across was this linear algebra meme uh, of which there are many which I found really surprising. But anyway, uh, next I went to um, Wikipedia. And Wikipedia says that linear algebra is the branch of mathematics concerning vector spaces and linear mappings between such spaces. Now let's all take a moment to digest that. Okay, so here's the thing with this, with this definition. It is impeccably accurate. Impeccably correct. Uh, but the problem, at least for our purposes, is that it is not at all helpful. Can you imagine telling somebody who does not know anything about linear algebra that linear algebra is the branch of mathematics concerning vector spaces and linear mappings? The truth is that if you know what those things are, then you already know what linear algebra is. So I'm not a big fan of this definition. So we are going to try to answer this question a little bit differently. Uh, we are going to discuss how we are going to go about studying linear algebra. In other words, there are many different pathways into this subject. Uh, we're going to pick one of them, and it's going to basically frame the entire course for us. So here, here we go. We are going to view linear algebra as the study of systems of linear equations. Now, I'm going to pause here so everybody can do kind of a fist pump because linear equations is something that you are probably familiar with. You've probably solved small systems of equations before in previous courses, whether it's pre-calculus um, or may maybe even in calculus to a certain extent. So this is, this is good. This is something that you are likely very familiar with. So this will be the pathway that we are going to take to explore the core ideas of this subject of linear algebra. And along the way, we are going to come across these vector spaces and linear maps that were mentioned in the Wikipedia definition. So indeed, we are going to be learning about those things, but maybe it's not a great to start with those. So you might be saying, wait a minute, I thought that I knew how to solve systems of linear equations. What does vector, what do vectors have to do with anything? And so we're going to look at an example here and try to answer that question. So here we have an example, a very basic example of a system of linear equations. And we're, we're going to go about looking at it uh, first the way that you are most likely used to. So that is, we're going to look at it by rows. In other words, we are going to consider these as, well, the equations of lines, and we're going to graph these lines, and the solution to the system, in other words, the, the point xy that satisfies both of these equations is going to be our solution. It's going to be the intersection of the two lines. So we can start by graphing these lines uh, by a fairly familiar method, I'd say, by finding the x-intercepts. So the x-intercept of the top equation is the origin, and the other one you can do a little algebra behind the scenes and find out that it's minus 3, 0. And then we can use what we know about slope to plot other points on these lines and graph them. And you can see that this was carefully chosen so that everything would work out nicely. We see that the point of intersection, in other words, the solution to this system, the point that satisfies both equations, is 1, 2. So that's, that's the relatively familiar way to do it. There are other ways to solve it. You could solve it by substitution or something like that, but this, I imagine, is a fair, fairly familiar way. Let's take a look now at a way that is probably unfamiliar, but is going to provide us with lots and lots of valuable information. So we're going to look at this by columns. This system of equations we can see is equivalent to this vector equation 
that I've written over here on the right hand side. So there's a little bit of a different focus here. On the left hand side when we're looking at it by rows, the solution to the system was the point of intersection of these two lines. But here, basically, it's asking for a linear combination of the vectors 2, minus 1, and minus 1, 2 that will give 0, 3 on the other side. So which linear combinations of 2, minus 1, and minus 1, 2 produce the vector 0, 3? So, of course, we know... We already know the answer to this because we did the we did it by rows first. So we already know that x equals 1 and y equals 2 are going to give us the solution here. So if we plug that in, you can use vector arithmetic to verify that this is indeed a solution. So again, there they are identical ways of solving the problem. They're equivalent ways, I should say, but from drastically different viewpoints. So over here Again, it's the point of intersection, and over here, 1, 2 is a linear combination of these, what might be called, column vectors. So we drew, uh, we drew a nice picture over here. Let's go ahead and do the same, just to, uh, just to get a different viewpoint on this. So if we graph the vectors, if we graph this vector equation, you can see that first, we depart from the origin, and this takes us to 2 minus 1. And then it says, well, we want two copies. We want to add two copies of the vector minus 1, 2. So we go over 1 and up 2. That gets us to 1, 1. And then left 1 and up 2 again. And what do you know? This gives us the vector 0, 3. So this gives us two different ways of looking at a system of linear equations. And this answers the question, uh, where do vectors come in? How do vectors, how are vectors involved in linear algebra at all? So let's summarize. We looked at the row picture where the solution is the point of intersection of the lines that are in the system of linear equations. And for the column picture, the solution is a linear combination of the vectors in the corresponding vector equation. So both of these are very important. Again, it, it answers the question, how do vectors fit into linear algebra? This gives us some insight into how we're going to be using vectors. Also important is being able to view a system both ways is extremely helpful, and it's going to be critically important in how the rest of this class plays out. So looking at it by rows, and looking at it by columns, this is exactly how we are going to go about studying systems of linear equations in this course. And I hope that gives you an idea of what you can expect uh, going forward. Thanks for watching.